Hi everybody, this is Joel with Island Farm Life and uh, today one of our big projects that we're going to be working on is putting together a mobile chicken coop uh, for our hens that we still have here on the property. The design that we're going to be using is the chickshaw design uh, that was put together by Justin Rhodes over at Abundant Permaculture. We're using his uh, smaller version, the mini uh, version of the chickshaw uh, because right now we only have uh, seven chickens uh, six hens and a rooster and uh, even if we got a few more uh, here on our property probably not more than you know a dozen or 15 chickens is all that we're going to have and uh, and that design seemed really uh, suitable for uh, what we had. We did start ordering the parts a couple of weeks ago um, probably the funniest part is uh, the wheels um, Justin had recommended that we uh, pick up the uh, run flat tires uh, out of uh, Northern Tool which uh, they're based out of North Carolina. And so we ordered those, and uh, they took quite the scenic route to get here. Um, they took all the back roads and small uh, US highways. I think they went to about nine states uh, before they finally made it to us. We started having all that snow. Um, and so they probably spent another uh, seven to 10 days sitting in the distribution center, uh, not going anywhere uh, before they finally got uh, rolled out to us. A couple of things that we noticed, um, when I went through his plans, I read all the uh, the parts list and I read through all the instructions to put it all together, uh, but I didn't really uh, read through the cutting list. Um, and when I started doing all the cutting yesterday uh, to be prepped for the project, uh, there were a couple things that I would probably uh, have done differently had I read through that first. Uh, one of them is that uh, he has me purchase all uh, two by fours and then rip them into two by twos, uh, which is fine. Um, but one of the problems that we have when we're living in the trailer is uh, lack of space. Um, and so we do not have a whole lot of great selection of tools uh, available to us, uh, accessories and, and things like that, uh, workbenches uh, that we would have had we had a full house and a full shop uh, to build this in. Um, so we did have to make a, a couple extra trips. I uh, had to go get a new ridi uh, ripping guide um, so that we could rip those. Um, we, uh, we did it on a folding table uh, out here in the driveway. Um, so just uh, had I known ahead of time, I probably would have bought two by twos uh, rather than trying to do the ripping. There's a couple of small things uh, like the brackets and, and things that he uses um, when he puts it together that I probably uh, I, I'm not using the same ones that he uh, specified. Some of that is a, a, probably a difference uh, regionally of what uh, parts are available in our local store versus what he had available. Um, but I think they're close enough that I think it's going to put together uh, pretty much the same way uh, that he had. And, and in the end, the results are, are really what's going to matter uh, so that we have a good solid home for the chickens. Um, so I've got all my parts put together. Uh, I've got all my cuts here. Uh, I got my drill uh, out uh, so that I can start uh, making some pre holes and I'm putting it together. And so we're going to go ahead and put that together now. All right, so we've almost got the uh, one by one uh, fence mesh on the bottom here. Um, gives it nice big holes, gives it room for the droppings to come through. Um, we'll go ahead and get this uh, completely attached and we'll uh, have to check the instructions for the next step because I don't remember what it is. So we've gotten the perches attached um, to the wire frame. And we're going to flip them over and tack down the wire just to make it a little bit more stable. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is to put up the uh, corner pieces uh, to start building up the sides of the coop. One of the things that I have noticed uh, that is different from me doing this to uh, watching Justin do this or, or anybody else working on it is uh, I do not have a little helper. Um, my little kids are all gone. Um, they're all old. My youngest is now, of course, 18, uh, going to college, living uh, 
living with my folks. Uh, he decided he did not want to uh, be on the sofa here in the trailer uh, with Colleen and I. Uh, so he opted for a spare bedroom at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Um, that's not to say that the, the parenting work is, is done. Um, this weekend was a great, great example of that. Uh, we got a call uh, Saturday night. Um, he was at work and uh, managed to cut himself at work uh, with, uh, with a knife. And uh, so was calling for, for help and advice. And uh, so I had to drive Colleen down there to pick him up and to take him to the ER. Um, he ended up with uh, four stitches on his finger and a big splint on there uh, to hold everything in place while it heals. Um, so uh, the, the, work, the work is never done. Um, and then, uh, well, we were all just uh, real happy that uh, it was as minor as it, uh, as it turned out to be. Hey there, uh, so we've gotten a little bit farther. We've gotten uh, the uprights in here and I'm putting the, starting to put the top pieces on. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're starting to lose a little bit of light. Uh, so I'm going to try to get as much done as I can uh, before it gets too dark. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and put it away for the night and we'll finish this off tomorrow morning. This morning, a little bit uh, cloudier today than it was yesterday. We don't have all the, the beautiful sunshine. We are still sticking at about... Uh, Oh, 38 to 40 degrees out. Not really terribly warm, uh, but certainly good enough that we can be working outside and uh, trying to get this chicken coop completed. We've gotten the, the frame basically done, and now we start doing some of the finish work. The first part is uh, putting on the, the front door for the uh, chicks to go on up and down. Uh, and then we'll work on getting the nesting boxes. And then uh, finally, it looks like we're going to put the roof on and uh, get that all taken care of. Another little anecdote to the side here. We talked about having to do all the uh, pre-cutting all of the lumber. And funny little story about that. I had uh, I got out my miter saw to get all those uh, those pieces done. Got all my straight pieces done on the two by fours, and I went to make that first 45 degree cut. I started sliding the table around on my on my miter saw, and, and it got about oh you know about 18 20 degrees, and, and then it stopped would not move forward. I couldn't move it back into the straight position either. So I went and looked at it and somehow over the course of 15 years that I've had that miter saw, I somehow managed to crack the table. Uh, there's actually a fracture through the metal uh, that actually uh, bent the uh, turntable uh, so that it was no longer turning and uh, sadly I couldn't even get it back into a straight position. Um, Colleen, my favorite wife, since it was something we were going to use quite a bit and as we're building new things here uh, on the property that I could certainly uh, go out and uh, invest in a new uh, new miter saw, new chop saw and uh, so I was able to take advantage of that and get all the rest of the cuts. No for you guys, always get a very forgiving wife so that if tools break uh, she will be nice to you and let you buy a new one. Anyway, so I got to get to work otherwise uh, she will not let me buy new tools in the future. So, let's see what we can get done. All right, so we put the, uh, the diagonal crossbars in here. It gives it a little bit more support going back and forth. <laughs> this thing is overbuilt as heck. Hopefully, uh, we will eventually have a tornado or some sort of major uh, disaster to test exactly how strong it is. Uh, but we're having fun, and uh, it's actually going together really well. I'm really happy with uh, with the instructions. Other than there are a couple of pieces that are not mis uh, listed in the uh, cutting instructions that then they have a uh, have you put together with. Um, but that's okay. We just uh, cut them on the fly and we're keeping them going. Hey everybody, it's uh, been a couple of days since I got out here and was able to uh, work on our little uh, portable chicken coop here, uh, the mini chick shaw couple of things that I've run across uh, that I've had problems with. One, uh, I started with uh, making the, uh, the door, the ramp for the chickens to come up and down. And I ran into a couple of problems. Some of them a matter of me not reading the instructions clearly or me misinterpreting the instructions. Probably going to have to just take the door off and, and start over. Uh, one of the problems that I had was that uh, the plywood that I was using uh, is not quite thick enough and so I'm getting screw uh, points uh, that are coming all the way through the wood. Um, so I'm going to replace that with a bit uh, thicker piece. 
Also, uh, I put the hinges on in, a, in an incorrect spot, uh, which uh, I can see now, uh, zooming in on the pictures uh, in the instructions, uh, where I should have put the screws. So I'll be able to adjust that when I put the uh, get the new piece of wood on there and get that taken care of. Uh, I pretty much just kind of skipped that for now and I'm working on putting the panels on the side. I've had these white corrugated roofing panels uh, for a while. Uh, they've been laying around, they're dirty, um, but they're certainly suitable for this project. And uh, they've been quite the adventure. I've, I've made a number of mistakes along the way here. Uh, the fir pro first problem with the white panels that I've had um, was uh, that I, I measured them out, got them all ready to go, got the saw out. Uh, and started cutting them and uh, using a power saw pretty much I, I splintered uh, that first cut I uh, spent sent little pieces of uh, white plastic uh, all over the driveway here uh, trying to get it to cut straight and it was just uh, falling apart I had to do a little bit of research on the best way to cut these it turns out the best way to do it is with a uh, heavy-duty pair of scissors and uh, that's been a lot more successful um, I managed to get those panels cut just fine the second uh, is I miss I mismeasured. Cut them in the wrong spot. I cut them too short. Um, I cut them uh, on a two foot length, uh, which basically only covers this interior portion. Uh, so I didn't have a panel that was long enough to actually screw into the wood. Uh, so I had to scrap those pieces, grab another panel out of the out of the wood pile here, and uh, cut new uh, pieces. So I'm working on getting these in. Got my uh, little roofing screws here. They're a self-tapping wood, uh, wood roofing screw. Uh, they're made to put these panels on. So what I did is I got them out. I got my drill out so that I could screw them on. And then I realized that uh, there's no screw heads on them. Uh, they're, they're bolt heads. So I had to work on getting uh, a bolt head. Um, I've had to switch and start using a, uh, a ratchet uh, because I do not have an attachment to uh, put a uh, bolt on my drill. So uh, so it's, it's been quite an adventure trying to get that all together. And so right now what I'm working with is, uh, is actually a set of metric nuts here uh, to get that on. And you know, so far everything's going really well. I've got the first panel on. Uh, the other ones are cut. I'm going to start putting them on. Um, I need to cut out the uh, opening for the nesting boxes. So I'm going to do that uh, once I get the other panel on. I found that this uh, being up on the deck while I stand on the ground works really well because now I'm at the right height uh, rather than having to crawl on my hands and knees to get these lower bolts. So uh, that's where we are. I'm continuing to work on this. We've gotten uh, blessed with a number of really nice sunny days recently. So I have been able to work on it. I wish there wasn't uh, a dozen other projects here that needed to be worked on as well. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're taking a, a short little short little road trip uh, so I want to try and get it done before that happens and uh, that way it's ready to go that way when we come back the first thing I can do is put chickens in there get them accommodated to their new home and um, move forward want to try and get that done before we actually start getting work people here because um, uh, the chickens may be getting skittish at that point uh, we're pretty excited and during the course of this video which has taken several days now uh, we've gotten word from the county that our, our building permits are approved. Uh, yeah, thank you, Colleen. So uh, we're going in uh, probably the uh, middle to end of next week to uh, talk to the builder, kind of get our plans all together, when they're going to come out, start taking some trees down, start clearing the property, and, uh, and start working. So we're pretty excited about that. So everything looks like it's coming together, and uh, our adventure is moving forward, uh, building the house and building a homestead. So we've uh, pretty much finished up our chickshaw, mini chickshaw uh, that we've been putting together. Uh, I've gotten the roof on, uh, I've gotten everything all put together. Uh, there are one or two things uh, that still need to be done. I need to put a few more tacks with the roofing screws uh, put in. Basically because since I am putting them in manually, uh, it's a lot of work, my hands start getting tired. Um, I can only put in you know, a few dozen at a time if I need to take a break on that. So we're going to go ahead and put a crossbar on the handle. I uh, hadn't really picked something out quite yet. I was going to go see if I could get a piece of cull lumber at uh, either uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. It really just kind of needs to provide a uh, just a cross balance uh, because it's a little bit at four feet wide. It's a little bit too wide to just reach out with uh, my arms and, and roll it. One of the other things that I need to do is uh, finish putting some sort of latch on the uh, the ramp for the chickens to go up and down. 
I wasn't really happy with uh, the way that it was set up. Some of that is because of where the offset is here uh, with the ramp. Right now what I'm using is just kind of a gravity feature. I'm using one of the L-shaped clamps. The ramp drops down okay. And then I'm really using just basically the, uh, the weight of the roof and it actually holds it in place. Right now it's a simple, simple solution. I may find something at the, uh, at the hardware store later that I can use to change that or make that better. But most of the predators that we have issues with around here are not large ground predators uh, that are going to knock this thing over. Most of our predators in this area are flying predators. I want to make sure that the, the roof is more solid and that there's a place underneath where the chickens can hide uh, when they need to. Uh, so uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that uh, Mini Chick Chaw has turned out. It's uh, pretty good even on the really rough ground that we have right now uh, because we haven't gotten any clearing done. Uh, we've got a lot of brambles, we've got lots of hillocks you know, that we're bouncing over. And it's actually still been pretty easy to uh, drive along. Next would be figuring out what type of fencing system we're gonna use. Uh, whether it's going to be the electric netting or whether we're going to put something uh, slightly more uh, solid with uh, uh, some welded wire and T-posts. Then it's getting the chickens acclimated to uh, uh, getting used to in here. Uh, we don't have the nesting boxes in here right now because we actually have them sitting in our uh, kennel that we're storing the chickens in at the moment. Uh, getting them used to going into that opening. Uh, we've got like a little overhang with it so that they're used to having uh, like a little tunnel to walk into. Um, we're uh, starting to get some good eggs here uh, now that we're uh, getting a little bit better weather here uh, at the beginning of March. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. Little quirks uh, in the design, but uh, nothing that uh, we weren't able to uh, overcome with a little bit of uh, rethinking and sometimes uh, reworking. Thank you to uh, Justin Rhodes over at Abundant Permaculture uh, for the design. And uh, thank you all for watching. If you like the video, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Still uh, trying to get this channel up and up and running. And uh, so it's uh, pretty basic. Hopefully we will get uh, better and better as we go along. But uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you.